<laughs> We're not going, are we? Oh, come on. I mean, if you're not here to have fun, what are we doing? All right? The name of the game is up. Look at that. Look at that. What? <laughs> Welcome back to Full Circus, the only show in which I regularly compete with myself in an effort to achieve the most wrinkled shirt. This week, I'm a competitor, man. My name is Tristan Sartois, and I'm so happy to be here with you guys today. We have a lot of fun things to talk about. Don't know where the Arnold Schwarzenegger comes from, dude. You think he would make a great podcast host? Or the worst one? I don't know, because here's the dilemma. Everything he says is so nice to listen to. It's it's melodic. It's sing-songy. It's exaggerated. It's fun. But on the other hand, I yeah, I don't know what you're saying. You know, we get back to the podcast. This is the Arnold thing, and we go to pop with the eye. You know, so I think that's a a great idea. I hope he gets into that, or maybe he already has. Um, you know, the thing about that is like. Is he putting that on? Is that just for show? Or is that like how all Austrians talk? You know, maybe we're like, oh, you know, he's not that great at speaking. And he's like, no, all Austrians talk like this. We, we don't have to do a good thing with the pump. It's the fun. It's like, oh, okay. I thought he just wasn't putting the effort to, you know, learn the language a little bit better. But that's how all Austrians talk. <laughs> or again, man, he might just be faking it because it's fun. It sounds. He might go home late at night and relax. Finally, I can not talk like an animal. I can finally relax and be a normal person. <laughs> dude, the thing about all 80s action heroes, dude, and no disrespect, but uh, all you had to do to be famous was be jacked and not be good at speaking, okay? You know, we can do that. I don't know we're talking, then the things out. And you're like, oh, wow, that's freaking incredible. Sylvester still, when hey, you like my house, my house stinks. Hey, it was great, you know? That's just the way it was. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Oh, I'm going to kick you the pot of sword. I don't have a great Jean-Claude. Okay, you figured me out. But you get my point, man. If you want to be famous in the 80s, put the books down and pick up the weights. So that's what that's all about, man. What was I going to say? Welcome back to the podcast, or for the first time. Happy to be here, dude. I just started, uh, like, 30 minutes ago or so, and I got a couple minutes into the show. I didn't have all that fun, though, so, you know, it worked out. And my father called me, and he goes, Hey, son, I'm going to need you to go and uh, pick a thing for me. Okay, you think you can do that for me, buddy? And I say, Yeah, sure, Dad, no problem! And I go, and I do the thing, and, you know, obviously... We He's going to hear this and go, Tristan, you're not supposed to go and do stuff if you got your own thing going on. And I say, hey, that's just the way I am. I like to serve. I like to contribute. At least I think so. You know, maybe deep down there's some part of me that always felt like an outcast in a hardworking family. And I've got a twisted perception of contributing and doing good deeds for the family. But really, it's an effort to win acceptance and favor from my father and my brothers. But who's to say, you know, he took psychology. <laughs> that's not true i just made all that up but it does hold water so anyways guys how are you doing it is a busy week here because we are actually leaving for vacation right after this going to the beach man the beach and i'm so excited to just get into a car with eight other individuals hot and sweaty and crammed and drive for 15 hours it sounds like i'm being sarcastic kind of because i was but it genuinely the worse you have, you know, the worse your time is, the more memorable it really is. Okay, you think about that. Um, I don't ever remember the times where I have good food or I'm surfing or my toes are in the sand. I remember the the sweaty fights and the, the hot the burnt food that I burnt myself or the times that I got freaking pulled over for not wearing a seatbelt and he docked me $300. Oh, it sucks, man. What a turd. I still think about that. I still... I forget, what are you doing, okay? Like, in what world can anyone tell me what I'm doing with my own safety? The only person that should be able to comment on that is if you have life insurance. They go, okay, you know, we're going to have to up your premiums. You can do whatever you want, but, you know, we can't just let you get away with this. But how stupid, dude. Like, and then to pull you over, and then I love how cops always like to talk to you and, like, give you fatherly wisdom or advice. You know, yeah, I'm going to have to take some money from you here, but, you know, I just need you to be a little safer out here because you're putting your life in danger. Oh, you think I didn't know that, huh? Like, I've never seen a seatbelt before. It's like, oh, I can't figure this out. Whatever, you know? It's like, yeah, I, I weighed the consequences. If I see somebody just walking on a ledge and I go, hey, hey, you realize 
that's an edge. They go, yeah, okay. I, I got up here because I thought I was going to do it. Okay? Who's to speak on anyone else's safety? That's nuts, man. The worst part, too, is that, you know, my... <laughs> My brother just taken out the freaking doorbell chime. So I, even if I wanted to, and I probably did or probably didn't, who's to say really? But if I did, I wouldn't, the freaking reminder didn't even go off. And I got docked. It sucks to lose money. And then someone, hey, dude, we just want you to be safe out there. You get speeding <laughs> tickets. Dude, you know, listen, I understand you're just in a rush. All right, what are we doing? Okay, just get the ticket and move on. I'm not, like, learning some new lesson here. You know, it can be a little dangerous to go speeding. You might hurt yourself. I know what I'm doing, okay? Now, I got caught, but I, I know the consequences. I know the risks that I'm taking. I'm going fast because I want to go fast, not because I go, oh, I didn't realize if I go faster, this might be endangering myself. Who knew? Hey, buddy, you know, I'm going to have to steal a good three, four hundred dollars from you. But I just want you to know in the future, less is more. Less is more with this. Less is more. Less is more. I think about that phrase all the time, man. We bring up stupid slogans and catchphrases and sayings all the time on this podcast. And less is more is one of them. OK, less is more. The only time that less is more might be applicable is with less stupid phrases. And that's because it would be more pleasant to the population if there was less of them. But in the real case, less, less, is it more? You look me in the eyes and you tell me, less is more. I go, hey, ha, no it isn't. Less is less. More is more. Less can never be more. More can never be less. Hey, less, by the way, you will never be more, okay? Because you are less than. You will never be more. More will always be more than you. I don't get it, man. How could you say, like, think of one time in your life where you go, Where's less is more? A lot of you are going to say fragrance. Oh, when you're spraying perfume or cologne, less is more. No, it's not, dude. It's again, it's like, yeah, less is a better experience for what I'm looking for. But I guarantee you, if I spray more of it, there's going to be more of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, why? There's no less is more. Try that with Halloween this, this freaking season, okay? Give your kid one Skittle. Say, hey, Timmy. Less is more. What do you freaking mean less is more? Jonathan's got 88 pounds of Milky Way. Dad, less isn't more. Wake up. I don't like how anybody says that. And we just follow the logic. Unbelievable. I can never, I can never get on board with less is more. It doesn't exist. It doesn't work like that. Hey, you know, cop, by the way, you want to dash me freaking $300. I want to remind you, less is more, okay? How about we split this $4.50 and maybe we... Both learn a more valuable lesson, sir. Ridiculous, dude. I don't get less is more. The only thing I can get is that sometimes some is worse than none, right? Like maybe you have one Oreo and you're like, ah, I can't just have one, okay? You know, it's like licking a candy bar and then someone gives you a big bite of cabbage. You're like, I have already tasted it. I can't go back to this. I can't go back. I've already had a plenty of sweetness, you know? Or <laughs> it's like, Theoretically, if your feet are cold and you put on one sock, you should be better than having none. But for some reason, some is worse than just having no socks at all. Because on one side, you're like, okay, I have some sort of civilization. On the other foot, you hear your bare foot slapping against the hardwood floor. And you go, oh, I'm kind of homeless right now. I'm better off having no socks. Okay? Now, less isn't more, but sometimes some is worse than none, dude. I don't know. I could never wear one sock. I would love to be that guy that was just so strong mentally, my fortitude, my strength, my power, my confidence, my determination, <laughs> you know, just to be able to do that. And people look at you and go, holy crap, this guy has another level of self-discipline or craziness. I don't know. Um, so that's stupid, dude. Sayings are dumb. And that's how they're always going to be. They're always going to be stupid. Here's another one that I have. This one necessarily isn't a dumb phrase in general. No, I take it back. It is. But it's just a personal one, okay? I'm talking like it's an MG, a mega gripe. I hate, okay, I'm being for real. Like, I'm, I'm always being silly and just talking about stuff. But right now, I'm going to be absolutely genuine and sincere with you. I despise it when... <laughs> You make somebody laugh and they go, <laughs> I don't know why I'm even laughing at that. Oh, dude, that one burns me alive. What do you mean you don't know why you're laughing? Again, try that anywhere else, okay? Oh, someone just built you these nice cabinets. You go, these are nice. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why I said that. Because you felt the thing that I made you feel, right? 
Is there any chance that I made you laugh and the joke was just actually funny? What is the guilt you're feeling when you go, I don't know what this feeling is. I don't know why I'm crying. Someone's playing nice music. You go, oh, this is nice. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm bopping my head or tapping my foot. Just feel the feelings you're feeling them, man. I hate that because it completely removes the work and the effort that I've just put in to get said laugh. You can't try and take that back. Give me the freaking satisfaction. Oh, bang or joke, bang or comedy. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. Because you're laughing. Own it, dude. I hate that so much because it's like, if I have toilet humor or something silly or childish and, and it gets the laugh, you'll go, I just, I don't know why I even found that funny. Because it was funny. I hate it, dude. I hate it. So do that to somebody and uh, you deserve to get slapped for real, man. And I'm talking not just one slap because less is more. I'm talking more slaps because you deserve more discipline. So anyways, man, we're going to the beach. I'm excited. It's good to spend the time with the family. Cherish these moments, okay? Love you, mom. She's not dead. She's just flying down there. She's not going to be in the car with us. But... You know, it's always a good time. I'm excited to be a part of something fun. Um, so what else is going on, dude? Oh, man, I was just at my aunt's house, and I have been in the dumps, okay? And I'm talking quite literally. I was on the crapper. So what happened was I go over there early. Also, side note, okay, this is a little extra tangent. I go over there at, like, 7 a.m., and I'm on a road, and <laughs> somebody's, like, right on my freaking keister, okay? I'm only going seven, eight miles over the speed limit. God forbid! I don't break the law all the way because I don't want to get charged $300. So anyways, I would love to go more is more, but I just know that, you know, cops don't play by those rules. So I'm driving. This guy's up on me. All right. And I don't really notice it for a while because I tilt my rear view mirror towards me, you know, because I want to keep my eyes not behind me, but on my future, myself. So I'm like, oh, what's up, dude? We're having a morning. And I'm driving. And then I finally notice him. And as I'm like turning, I see him. And he screams out the window. He's like, oh, you freaking butthole. I want to fight you. Or whatever he said. You know, there's only so many words you can get in a quick drive-by. And I kind of like pull over and slow down because I think he's going to turn and follow me. I was like, are we going to scrap? Um, but he just kept going. And I just can't help think, how mad can you be at like 7, 8 in the morning? What could have possibly happened to this guy? Mind you, I'm not even going the speed limit, okay? I'm going over it in a place where people get pulled over all the time. And he's like, you really bull! Like, where, where could you be in a rush to, okay? The only time you deserve to be mad and rushing for real is if you're an 80s action hero. And he didn't look that buff, and honestly, his English was pretty good. So there's no way that he was like John McClane trying to go and save the world. What are you doing? What happened to you, sir? It was 7.30 or something. Ah, why is it so slow? Like, I, what could you possibly have been up to? You had to have been woken up with the worst news possible, been driving somewhere, and then you, I, you can't break the, I don't know. I don't know. There's no rationalizing it, okay? Less of that attitude would be, well, it would be less attitude, and we'd like less of it. Thank you. So anyways, I go to my aunt's house, right? And my aunt, all right, she decorated out the wazoo for the fall season. Okay, I don't know if she did this just for herself or because I was coming over, and there was all kinds of festive snacks aplenty. It was nice. And again, I don't think you should ever have a favorite aunt or uncle. And if you do, you should never say it publicly. But, I mean... What are you, what are you, like, what am I supposed to say, all right? Like, no disrespect, again, to anybody else who might be trying for that position, but you're blown out of the water, all right? Stop trying to use the less is more approach and just look at the competition. More is more. It's amazing. I love my aunt's house. It's like, you know certain places you go in the world where you're just like, oh, my soul is aligned right now. That's where I go. It's like a freaking autumn oasis. I'm just rejuvenated, creatively happy. You know, this is what that guy who was road raging about. This is what he needs, okay? You need a little pumpkin spice, a little hot Cheeto, a little fun in your life, some smells. So anyways, it was so pleasant that I fell off the wagon hard, ate all the snacks. Like, I freaking tumbled off the back. The horse, the freaking carriage, they just kept riding away. I don't even know where the wagon's at. And I partied oh so hard until... Well, the whole time I was there, really, and I came home just sick to my stomach, man, and you're just, you know, you're your own worst enemy sometimes, and that's a hard burden to bear. You're like, dang, no one did this to me. I ate myself into this hole, and I don't think any other country can say that. We're so fat! That's how I've been feeling, man. 
Um, oh, you know what? I wanted to watch a video with you guys because I just came across this page where the guy is in the Everglades in Florida and he's like snake hunting, touching alligators. Like, I, I just want to show you. Everglades and I just found a swamp. Park. Shock it up. Jeez. Where'd Dude, you go? look how close you know he gets to these is? things. Ooh, snake. What do we got here? Yoink. Just abandoned water snake. I don't know. That was just inches from me. Turns out she's watching her babies. Dude, imagine not giving how. Take care now, sweetheart. Check out this little cotton mouth. <laughs> Ain't he a cute little Dude, fella? Dude, Florida people are insane. Got me a of, ooh, so yoink. crazy. Another snake. We got an Everglades racer. Yeah, no right problem. Right here we got the classic Burmese python. Where's the 20 footer? Right here we got a juicy old cane toad. Yoink. This is so stupid. All right, this is an interrogation. Tell me where the 20 foot python is. So anyways, he's looking for a 20 foot python and just going through the freaking jungle. All right, I think he's the ultimate prey. He is an animal and he's like, he going freaking face to face with a crocodile and he called it a, a what? A swamp puppy or whatever. Whenever you <laughs> are so comfortable with something that could kill you that you're giving it a nickname. I don't even know if that's courageous anymore. I think it really is just crazy. Like, I, I can't even process what I'm seeing. It's so terrifying to me. I'm not brave, not with nature, no, dude. I had a dream last night that there was a shark attack. Okay, and again, we're going to the beach, but I had a dream there was a shark attack and it wasn't even me. I saw another shark attack and I don't wanna go in the ocean anymore. If it was me, dude, if I had a dream that I got bitten by a shark, again, not real. I wouldn't want to turn on a sink again, let alone step into a body of water. This guy is going face to face with things that are actively trying to hurt him. He's just grabbing these things by the neck and giving him sweet nicknames, a swamp puppy. That's like somebody holding you at gunpoint and then you nicknaming their gun. That's nuts, dude. I mean, there's multiple people like this, especially out in Florida. Like they just go out here and they face nature and it's either courageous or stupid. I don't know, but like, what do you think they're scared of? You know, what do these people lay awake at night thinking of? Like, oh, man, I just can't think bongos. I hate the sound. You know, I don't know. Like, this is insane. I just thought that'd be funny to watch because I I can't, dude. Like, you know, there's certain things in life that you just need to know your place. And I think the swamp is not mine. All right. I think I'm better in bed, you know, at home. I need warmth. I need pumpkin spice and candles. I can't be out grabbing alligators and snakes by the tail. Yoink. I wish I had the, the courage to die. I mean, that's really what it is, dude. You have to be brave enough to know that at any point with a slight inch of a step, that thing turns around and you're gone. You're just done. And he's actively, he can, he's holding the things up saying, like he's an Italian mafia boss. You're gonna tell me where the 20 foot python is. I'm scared watching the video, man. The world's dangerous, dude. The world is dangerous. Oh, dude, speaking of danger, man. Now, look, I don't know if this is gonna be funny to a lot of people, but I've been seeing a lot of shootings lately, okay? And this is forever a prevalent issue we have in our country. And I know people might be saying, Tristan, don't try and make a comedy bit out of something so sensitive. And to that, I say, I'm going to try. <laughs> Skip the details and the plots. And these are some of my interesting thoughts. Hmm. Oh, look, here's the deal. With gun control, all right, it's such a hot topic because like everything else, nobody can agree on everything. We're so hot-headed and narrow-minded. You know, I can't agree with what you're saying. I can't have any deviation or variation from what I'm thinking because I know that whatever I'm thinking, I'm so confident is the absolute perfect way to think. And there's no chance for acceptance or compromise, right? You're like, oh, we need to get rid of all guns and all this and all weapons and all lives and this is the only way it can be. And the other side, you have no, we need more weapons and more lives and all this because that's the only way that it's gonna be. And people have examples for anything that you wanna back up. Dude, I don't even know if facts even exist anymore. It's like everyone's got an opinion, but somehow both sides have a laundry list of facts to back it up and that can't exist. So <laughs> meanwhile, while I watch everybody battle back and forth, we got this the first of all. I think we're missing a glaring issue in the shootings. Okay, one recently that I just saw was at a Chick-fil-A of all places. It's horrible. Um, the guy did live though, so let me preface that. So this guy goes in to order chicken and a biscuit cashier guy tells him, hey, we don't have any more biscuits. And the guy ordering takes out a gun and he shoots the guy just straight up, all right, over bread, over a biscuit. Like how meaningless can you take out a gun and just fire it? Imagine if he said, wait, we don't have any chicken. Like over biscuits, biscuits of all things. But anyways, that's not the point. He shot the guy 
point blank. And everyone, again, we want to argue gun control and what to do and how this. I have been thinking nonstop about all these shootings, and I just want to ask the question, why is nobody missing anymore? What happened to where everybody is just freaking Django now? We're all dead-eye. Everybody's a sharpshooter? When was the last time you heard of an attempted shooting where a guy went up to Chick-fil-A and said, we're out of biscuits, he goes, hey, hey, and he shoots, and he just misses all the shots. Never. Nobody misses shots anymore. It's ridiculous. If I tried to shoot somebody, I go, ga, 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 and I would miss everything. Harry, you're a horrible shot. So we can argue back and forth all day about what to do with the guns, but what are we doing with the people, okay? There was a problem with confidence in our aim, man. Like, to me, a gun is kind of like a flamboyant shirt. You know what I mean? Like, you could own it, but if you don't feel confident enough that you're going to be able to pull it off, you're not taking it out of the house, okay? There's too much confidence in people shooting these days. So here's my premise, all right? This is my thought. I think you could do whatever you want with guns, but I think the real issue, the gun ranges, okay? I think you say, hey, <laughs> sir, you have the right to bear arms, but you don't have the right to practice. So now you have people who don't know how to use what they're using. It's the equivalent if you didn't have guns and everybody had a bow and arrow, right? Super dangerous, but most people don't know how to shoot a bow, so you're not gonna try and assault somebody with it because what happens if you miss? You're embarrassed, right? Like if this guy pulled out the gun and he shot the guy, he's like, oh, freaking, I gotta get out of here, you know? You don't ever try to do anything if you're not confident in doing it. If you don't think you can do it, why would you try and do it? I think gun violence would plummet because who's pulling out a gun? You have like a, a Mexican stand up and no one's even scared because like, I don't even know if I'm going to hit any of these guys. What's the point of pulling it out if you can't be successful with it? <laughs> oh, man. Um, so again, dude, that's just my two cents. I'm thinking that could have a viable outcome for you and I'm sure people are going to be upset on both sides because I went right down the middle and you know what to that I say who else out there is actually presenting a solution you guys are all standing so hard on both sides I'm going right down the middle Jack I'm throwing out ideas when was the last idea outside of the box you heard never also mind you check the title of the show okay it's called full circus circus is full of what silliness outlandish thoughts it's not full of good ideas and, and, you know, political views. I'm not a political scientist, okay? I'm just a goofball who happened to take psychology. So have that if you will. You know, I would love it if the world was saved by a guy wearing a Cartoon Network shirt and a Daffy Duck hat. Oh, man. So anyways, what else is going on out in the world now that we've literally solved the world's issues? Um, I have a little bit of a question, okay? Like I said, I take walks quite frequently. I'm active, even though I eat so much junk food that I almost die. But I, I'm taking these walks, right? And it was trash day the other day. You know where they have the freaking trash trucks and everyone's got the respectable brand brandished on their own cans. Um, this isn't my question, but why isn't there just like one trash service? You know, you can't tell me that multiple different trash companies are needed. Like, oh, we pick up their crap better than anybody. It's all the same freaking thing. You come on the day and you're out. But everything has to have multiple of it. Like it's a fashion company. Oh, I'm part of the prestigious group because they pick up my crap in a very delicate way. Oh, who are you wearing? Oh, who's picking up your garbage? There's no justifying it. But anyways, I walk past, you know, all these people with their fancy trash cans and I pass a guy's can and he doesn't have any particular you know, country club he's a part of. <laughs> and as I get closer, I see that instead of having a brand or anything on it, he just has a white sheet of copy paper. And he wrote on the freaking paper for trash pickup. And that's it. And I watched as the trash company came and they picked up the garbage. Now, look, we can sit here and theorize all day and go, oh, you know, maybe something happened to his cans. They got blown away. Somebody stole them because you know how hot of a ticket that item is. Dude, you see that guy's garbage can? <laughs> we got to steal that. The black market's dying for these things. Um, you know, I don't know what happened, but we could say something did and he worked out a deal with his company. Say, hey, you know, I'm not going to have the official one. I just got this generic unbranded Walmart can, but just come and get my trash regardless. I don't know if that's the case. And here's where my question lies, okay? Because... Do trash trucks have data and system and a GPS and a lock on, oh, this is this freaking can, the place we go, this guy's having trouble with his can, so he's probably just gonna have a piece of paper on the front, or 
Do you just drive down the road and every time you see a name that's the same as the one on your truck, do you grab that trash? So as much as I want to believe that this guy just worked out a deal like a normal, you know, good meaning citizen, I can't help as someone who likes to pull fast ones that this guy just scammed the whole trash industry. So I'm just curious if you could get away with it. And furthermore than that, how much power does a piece of paper have, dude? Where else can you use this? And you can just say, oh, sorry, I don't have the actual thing you're looking for, but I wrote it in Sharpie. Does that count? It's like a freaking IOU, man. What is this? Where's all the money? That's as good as money, sir. Those are IOUs. <laughs> That's the second Dumb and Dumber reference we've used. Go try and buy alcohol. And you're like, oh, you know what? I forgot my fake ID, but you know, I wrote down 21 on here. Does that count? And you go, oh, okay. That makes sense. And I think the genius in it is because it's so crappy of a scam. It's not clever at all. It takes zero effort. And I think that is why it would work, okay? Because if you were to spray paint a stencil of a trash company on the side of your can, you go, oh, this guy put a lot of effort into trying to pass it off as something. As opposed to just putting this on, it looks so unfortunate and sad. It really looks like somebody was just down on their luck and they're just in need of trash service. Dude, I bet I could go into a club and someone goes, hey dude, you're not on the list. I just hold this up and says like, hello, my name is on the list. <laughs> Now, surely, yeah, that's a little bit different because it says, I actually, indeed, I can say I am on the list. I don't know why he's French now. Do you know how persuasive they can be? But hey, dude, I lost my credentials, but I assure you, I am on the list, you know? And I just don't know how you argue with a piece of copy paper because there's some sort of authority that this thing seems to hold. You know what, my question was about the trash, like if that would work, if they have systems, you know, if, if that happens or whatever. But now my new question is, how much can I get away with? So if anyone else is out there, thinking about how to shyster the world, try just a regular old fashioned copy paper and a Sharpie because it's worked for the guy down the street. I don't have the data. I don't know what happened, but all I know is that his garbage had zero credentials and it still got picked up. Plus one for the scammers. <laughs> oh man, life is fun. Um, so I was gonna do this on the previous couple weeks, but I was waiting until there was official Halloween items in the store galore, all right? And they are. And there comes a point in every young man's Halloween season where he just has to listen to Halloween music for the first time. And we did it last year. And there's just this part of me where every time you listen to it, every time you boot it up, you have to think, am I going to love it the same amount as I loved it last year? You know, it's like listening to Mariah Carey every Christmas. You go, oh, is it really going to be the same? Am I really going to feel the same connection in my soul as I did prior? So now what's becoming an annual tradition here on the show, we are going to listen to This Is Halloween and just see how much we really care about it. Because we joke and we can have fun and like thematic experiences here on the podcast. But if we're not really connecting with it on a deep level, what's the point in being so extravagant about it? So I just want to test myself in front of all of you and we can see together whether or not this is Halloween. <laughs> here we go. Oh, what is that feeling? <laughs> Boys and girls of every age. This is. I broke it. I broke it. I broke it. Can scream in the dead of night. No stairs. Think it's like snakes and spiders in my head. This is Halloween. 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 Oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Listen, I would love to just sit here and burn calories in front of you forever listen to this, but oh! Dude, it just makes you happy. There's no other purpose. There's no more excitement other than the fact that it just freaking, you know, in my heart, it's Halloween. It's Halloween. It's always Halloween in my soul. <laughs> oh man, I'm so happy to listen to these things. It's so good! And again, I don't know where it came from. I hated Halloween like freaking six, seven years ago. Where did it come from? I don't know. But gosh dang it, dude. If you could find something like that where you can just connect on and you could align your spirit, oh, you could move mountains. I mean, I don't know if I could move mountains. I could move a small pile of dirt or something. But that's good enough, dude. Let the music flow. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I think that's all we have to talk about and enjoy today together. Um, yeah, so I'm going to listen to this on repeat until the next time we see each other. And I don't care that I'm going to the beach, okay? It might be summer there, but for me, in my heart, 
It's Halloween, baby. Oh, it's Halloween in my soul. Oh, man. And less is not more, because more of this is more, dude. I'm thinking we should do a cover of that this season. We'll see. We'll think about that. Oh, man. I am closing, but there should be another video that just came out. I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping to do it. I haven't recorded it yet. So if it's there, hey, I got it done. If not, oh, he failed. He was listening to the music so much. But you know what? If it's not there, less it's still less, and I'm sorry. <laughs> but guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for being a part of this season. Thanks for having fun with me. Thanks for understanding that more will always be more. And if you laugh, don't even question it. Accept it. And you know what? Next time somebody brings up a hot topic on gun control, friggin' send them this podcast. And even though I'm being silly, maybe I opened some eyes out there. Could you imagine if somehow, like, that's what actually people are like, oh, here now on Fox and CNN News. <laughs> Man child who dances around to Halloween themed music cures everything. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I love you. It's Halloween, even when it's not, and I'm happy to be here with you guys. So thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. And pray I don't get freaking pulled over on the way to the beach. I can't afford to do that again. I spent all my money on Looney Tunes hats. <laughs>